on the AI front, if we could just link on that for, for yeah. a second. Uh, so you're friends with, you often talk with Elon Musk throughout history, you've uh, did a lot of interesting things together. Um, he has a, a, a set of fears about the future of artificial intelligence, AGI. Do you have a sense, you've, we've already talked about the things we should be worried about with AI. Do you have a sense of the shape of his fears in particular? about AI, uh, of the which subset of what we've talked about, whether it's uh, creating, you know, it's that direction of creating sort of these giant competition systems that are not explainable, they're not intelligible intelligence, or is it, um, is it the, and then like as a branch of that, is it the manipulation by big corporations of that or individual evil people? to use that for destruction or the unintentional consequences. Do you have a sense of where his thinking is on this? From my many conversations with Elon, yeah, I, I, I certainly have a model of how how, I, how he thinks. It's actually very th much like the way I think also. I'll elaborate on it a bit. I just want to push back on when you said evil people. I, I, I don't think it's a very helpful context, <laughs> concept, <laughs> evil people. Yes. Sometimes people do very, very bad things but they usually do it because they think it's a good thing. Yes. Because somehow other people had told them that that was a good thing or yeah. given them incorrect information or or, or whatever, right? Yes. Um, uh, I, I have I believe in the fundamental goodness of humanity that if we educate people well and they find out how things really are, people generally want to do good and be good. Uh, Hence the value alignment. As yes. opposed to, it's it's ab about information, yes. about knowledge, and then once we have that, we'll we'll uh, we'll likely be able to uh, do good in the way that's aligned with everybody else who thinks. Yeah, and good. it's not just the individual people we have to align. So we we don't just want people to be educated to know the way things actually are and to treat each other well, but we also we need to align other non-human entities. We talked about corporations, there has to be institutions so that what they do is actually good for the country they're in and we should align, do, make sure that what countries do is actually good for you, the species as a whole, etc. cetera. Uh, coming back to Elon, yeah, my, my, my uh, understanding of, of how Elon sees this is really quite similar to my own, which is one of the reasons I like him so much and enjoy talking with him so much. I feel he's quite different from most people in that he, thinks much more than most people about the really big picture, not just what's going to happen in the next election cycle, but in millennia, millions and billions of years from now. Right? And if you, when you look in this more cosmic perspective, it's so obvious that we are gazing out into this universe that, as far as we can tell, is mostly dead, with, with life being a almost imperceptibly tiny perturbation, right? And <laughs> and he sees this enormous yeah. opportunity for our universe to come alive, for yeah. us to become an interplanetary species. Yeah. Mars is obviously just first stop on, on this cosmic journey. And, and precisely because he thinks more long-term, it's much more clear to him than to most people that what we do with this Russian roulette thing, we keep playing with our nukes, is a really poor strategy, a really reckless strategy. And also that, that that we're just building these ever more powerful AI systems that we don't understand is also just a really reckless strategy. I, I feel Elon is a very much a humanist in the sense that he wants an awesome future for humanity. He wants it to be us that control the machines rather than the machines that control us. Yes. You know, and why shouldn't we insist on that? We're building them after all, right? Why should we build things that just make us into some little cog in the machinery that has no further say in the matter, right? That's not my idea of an inspiring future either. Yeah, the, the if if you think on the cosmic scale in terms of both time and space, so much is put into perspective. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I have a bad day, that's what I think about. It immediately makes me feel better. What, what... It makes me sad that for us individual humans, at least for now, the ride ends too quickly. That we don't get to experience the cosmic scale. Yeah, I mean, I think of our universe sometimes as an organism that has only begun to wake up a tiny bit. 
uh, just like when you the when the very first little glimmers of consciousness you have in the morning when yeah. you start coming around before the coffee <laughs> before the coffee even before you get out of bed before yeah. you even open your eyes you know, it starts you start to wake up a little bit you know, there's something here you know uh, that's very much how I think of of well we are you know those all those galaxies out there you know I think they're really beautiful but why are they beautiful they're beautiful because conscious entities are actually ex observing them and experiencing them through our telescopes. If I, you know, I define consciousness as subjective experience, whether it be colors or emotions or sounds. So beauty is an experience, meaning is an experience, purpose is an experience. If there was no conscious experience ob observing these galaxies, they wouldn't be beautiful. If if we do something dumb with advanced AI in the future here and Earth originating life goes extinct, and that was it for this, if there is nothing else with telescopes in our universe, then it's kind of game over for meaning, beauty and meaning and purpose in our whole universe. And I think that would be just such an opportunity lost, frankly. And I think when Elon points this out, he gets very unfairly uh, maligned in the media for all the dumb media bias reasons we talked about, right? They want to print precisely the things about Elon out of context that are really clickbaity. Mm -hmm. Like he has gotten so much flack for this uh, summoning the demon statement. Oh, uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> I happen to know exactly the context because I was in the front row when he gave that talk. It was at MIT, you'll be mm -hmm. pleased to know. It was the Aero Astro anniversary. They had Buzz Aldrin there from the moon landing, the whole house, Kresge Auditorium packed with MIT students. And he had this amazing q and It might have gone for an hour and they we talked about rockets and Mars and everything. At the very end, this one student who was actually in my class <laughs> yeah. asked him, what about AI? Elon makes this one comment and they take this out of context, print it, goes viral. Was it like with AI, we're summoning the demon, mm -hmm, something like mm -hmm, that? Mm -hmm. And try to cast him as some sort of doom and gloom dude, you know? Yeah. You know Elon. That's, yes, <laughs> he's not the doom and gloom good dude. No. He he is such a positive visionary, and the whole reason he warns about this is because he realizes more than most what the opportunity cost is of screwing up. That there is so much awesomeness in the future that we can we can and our descendants can enjoy if we don't screw up. Right? I, I get so pissed off when people try to cast him as some sort of technophobic luddite. And, and at this point, it's kind of ludicrous when, when I hear people say that people who worry about artificial general intelligence are Luddites, because, of course, if you look more closely, you have some of the most art outspoken people making warnings are people like Professor Stuart Russell from Berkeley, who's written the best-selling AI textbook, you know, so claiming that he is a Luddite who doesn't understand AI is, is the joke is really on the, the people who said it. But but I think more broadly, this message is really not sunk in at all. What it is that people worry about. They think that Elon and Stuart Russell and others are worried about the dancing robots uh, picking up an AR-15 and going on a rampage, right? They think they're worried about robots turning evil. They're not. I'm not. You know, the, the risk is not malice. It's it's competence. The risk is just that we build some systems that are incredibly competent, which means they're always going to get their goals accomplished, even if they clash with our goals. Mm -hmm. That's the risk. Why did we humans, you know, drive the West African black rhino extinct? Is it because we're malicious, evil rhinoceros haters? No, it's just because our goals didn't align with the goals of those rhinos and tough luck for the rhinos, you know. So what I'm what we, the point is just we don't want to put ourselves in the position of those rhinos creating these something more powerful than us if we haven't first figured out how to align the goals. And I am optimistic. I think we could do it if we worked really hard on it because I spent a lot of time around intelligent entities that were more intelligent than me, my mom and my dad. And I was little, and that was fine because their goals were actually aligned with mine quite well. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've seen today many examples of where the goals of our powerful systems are not so aligned. So those click-through optimization algorithms 
that are polarized social media, right? They were actually pretty poorly aligned with what was good for democracy, it turned out. And um, again, almost all problems we've had in the machine learning, again, came so far not from malice, but from poor alignment. And it's that's exactly why that's why we should be concerned about it in the future. 